It's Thursday, March 18th, the Thursday of spring break. Let's get caught up. So it's been, uh, it's been a couple weeks since I've done a vlog because uh, it's been crazy and I, I just sort of lost track of the vlogs. I have footage from everything, so I'll go back and sort of retroactively make some vlogs that go in order, but um, they, they won't have my narration. That's going to make people sad, like the one person watching it, my mother. I'm sorry, mom. Uh, so here's it. Look, a, a lot, a lot has gone down. So we were in the process of moving this giant platform from the stage left wing onto the stage. It's from our production of Charlie Brown from a long time ago, and it's massive. And I use it uh, to store stuff. It sort of doubled the storage backstage because uh, you know it went vertical, and you could put stuff on top of it. We were in, in the process of moving that out. This was last week, and uh, I got an email from the licensing company for Thirty Nine Steps, and found out that we hadn't acquired the rights to the play and I understand that um, so I'm not blaming them but because uh, it's you know it's their call it's not my call I made a rookie mistake here's here's the thing kids if if you're a theater director at any level don't start a show before you secure the rights uh, I did in my defense I have never not gotten the rights to a show that I wanted to direct and I had directed this show previously, although the licensing company changed between the two times and that's the difference, but um, I had no reason to think that we wouldn't be able to do this show um, for the competition, but we couldn't, so fine, but that is, uh, you know, that's a dilemma. Another thing is just from an educational standpoint, if you're new to directing, um, while we had begun the process and we'd started building the sets, we'd, we'd done some costume work, we had done a lot of blocking. The, the thing that I hadn't done is I hadn't announced the show, right? Because I really won't announce the show until I secure the rights. So that's just, you know, you can file that away. If you're pretty sure you're gonna get the rights, you can go ahead and start playing around with your kids. Although I wouldn't go as far as we did, we had half the set built. And costumes, I bought costumes, uh, not I, a bunch, but we bought a couple dresses for Gabe. Um, and now when am I going to use them? Maybe next year we'll be able to do 39 steps. But this year we had to switch and so um, I got that email, we took an ice cream break because that's that's what you do in emergency situations and we just discussed it. I then, we had an all day rehearsal schedule the next day so when they came in I just laid it out for them. Um, I'll probably show a little bit of that talk. Um, but basically, I just gave them four choices. One of those choices, the one that they picked, um, is Peter and the Star Catcher. So I basically said, okay, uh, we we got to switch shows. We are now behind, like we were two months into the production. I go slow. Um, I go slow in, in the rehearsal process. Um, but we had still accomplished quite a bit. Again. But okay, so we're not gonna do that. Here, are, here are four shows that I think we could do, that we could put together in a way that will be satisfying to the audience and the judges and to ourselves. And the last choice uh, was Starcatcher. We have done Starcatcher recently, like three years ago. It won state for us um, in this same competition we're doing this year virtually. And so I feel a little bit, uh, I feel a lot of mixed feelings about going back to it this early. There are two cast members who were in the original production. Um, I'm not letting them play the same roles and we're also not going to copy that production where it's a whole new concept and so I feel okay about it that way. But still, uh, I feel bad um, because it's a hard show to beat if it's done well. And I know that when other coaches find out, I haven't told anybody yet, when other coaches find out that we've switched from 39 Steps to Peter and the Starcatcher, they're going to be uh, pissed off about that. So I need to sort of, I need to smooth the way for that before the word gets out. The reason I'm doing it, I, I mean, I, I gave them three other choices and really this was not my first choice. This wasn't the one that I was hoping they'd go for. But when I said it, um, uh, their faces lit up, they sat up in their chairs, and it's the first time this year that I've seen them be really, truly excited about something. And so, you know, is it the best decision in terms of an educational point of view? Uh, probably not, because they've seen this show recently, some of them have been involved in this show recently, so I'm not expanding uh, what they're doing. On the other hand, uh, we do story theater a lot, and 
39 Steps was is essentially story theater. We were treating it that way. So, so they're not going to not learn things from this process, but it's not like new literature that they're working on for most of them. Well, for some of them. Actually, most of them are new to it, but they have seen the old production. Um, so that's that's where that's where I'm at. But but so from an educational standpoint, I I'm not sure that it's the best choice. Um, I've talked before about I think that I have like I think of myself as having these three standards: uh, professional theater standards, artistic theater standards, and educational theater standards or theater education standards, not educational theater. That's a different thing, sort of. So uh, so. Here's, uh, I'm kind of throwing that out the window. I'm, I'm going to get us to the highest possible professional standards with this show. Um, and I'm going to teach along the way. And I'm going to feel, and they're going to feel artistically um, satisfied. But what sold me on it was the looks on their faces when I said we could do Starcatcher. Choice four, maybe not the best choice. We could do Starcatcher again. And like the joy that that brought to them. And here's the thing, it's probably my favorite play. It's certainly one of my favorite that, well, it, it, I, I don't know that, I'm not gonna say one directing, directing experience is better than the other, but just in terms of the play itself, it is, it's beautiful and touching and funny and inspiring. It's everything. It hits everything you want to hit with theater. It's why we do theater. So um, I'm excited to go back to it, but like I told them, I had the perfect cast for that last time. That's why we did it. And I just leveled with them and said, you guys aren't the perfect cast for this because a lot of you are not ready for this. Uh, the freshmen uh, and some of our sophomores, they just don't have a lot of experience. And this is a hard show if it's, if you're, if you're, if you're holding yourself to sort of a competitive standard, this is not the show to do with first timers because it is tough. Um, and I've got a lot of first timers um, saying lines and things and they're doing great so far. But um, anyway, so that's that. We're gonna go back to Starcatcher. Star Catcher. What that meant is uh, we had to take down the, <laughs> the 39 step set, the gigantic box seat. We were halfway done with the other one and then uh, we stopped moving the platform. I called a halt and uh and we we spent a little bit of time talking about how we could incorporate the box seat um the box seat into star catcher like maybe it could become the bow of a ship i talked about that specifically with the kids on that day so i'll just cut to that clip now the trouble with star catcher is there are two things one three things one i i am having real trouble figuring out how to make the box seats work and so we would have to come up with that, with that plan. I've always, I always thought if I was gonna do Star Catcher again, I would set it like literally in an attic, like build, build the framing of an attic. It would be like this, and then another one, like kind of a rib cage going back. So you know you're in an attic with a fan in the back and everything on stage and then kids open a door in the back and come into the attic and just start exploring and then somebody picks up a boat that he finds this was the idea with our production of it but i i have always wanted to actually literally put it in an attic and put all the costumes on stage before the cast gets there and so the kids go up and somebody kids uh, uh, some kid finds a boat picks it up when i was boy i wanted to fly or whatever right I don't know if we would do that. We may use this. That could be a boat. That could be a boat to so the, the the ship battle. Here's my trouble with that. And we're not, I mean, we're not ready to talk about this yet, but just as a highlight of the things we would have to figure out, if we're going to use the stuff we've built, if we're going to do a play in story theater form with you're using just whatever you find furry to be the cat and you're using a rope to be doors, why do you also have practical set pieces? that are specifically, this is a boat. Why would you, uh, you know, that's the question. So we would have to work that out. And so that's my feelings on that. 
Um, so it needed to be a new thing. So we sort of literalized this idea that I always have when I do a story theater kind of situation, which is that it's essentially the actors, think of the actors as kids exploring an attic and just using whatever they find there to make the play. It could be an old barn or it could be an old warehouse. It's just any space that sort of, if you think back to your childhood, that were, these are places that held magical powers, right? If you, you, you probably weren't supposed to go into them, but when you did, you found stuff that was cool and uh, inspired your imagination. So things became swords or whatever it was. And that's, that's sort of the idea with story theater in terms of my take on it. It's just what can you find and how can you use it to build the story? We're doing that uh, sort of in a literal way now. We're gonna build the frame of an attic. That's sort of, you can kind of see it behind me. Um, and then we're going to populate it with all kinds of stuff that they can use. That brings up some interesting choices though because it means you, you're not gonna do real costumes, right? You're not gonna put anybody in a real pirate costume because what are the chances that there's a real pirate costume in somebody's attic unless it's my attic or some other theater director's attic. I pulled out my tub of Pirates of Penzance that I store in my parents' shed. Um, to take a look at it to see if there's anything there that we could reuse and it's all clearly pirates. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna use other things. The mollusks, for example, um, are going to, uh, they're sort of the, the star catcher version of the um, Indian tribe that is in Neverland. Um, and they're, they're just gonna be in Hawaiian shirts, right? Because they find Hawaiian shirts and that inspires them to have this sort of island uh, culture thing happening. And they become the mollusk tribe and capture uh, the boy and the, the lost boys and Molly. So, um, so that's what we're gonna do. It's, uh, the kids are pumped about it. And uh, it's spring break. I've had kids up here most days of spring break to do various things. Uh, I brought my niece Josie up the other day to help me paint some stuff and she did and that was awesome. We're getting ready for our virtual regional speech contest. So they've been submitting those, recording those videos to submit for that. And uh, we've all kind of been up here. The last two days, I'm the only one who's been here the last, yeah, the last two days. Um, because I, I'm working on some stuff, I've decided to paint the deck of the stage. It, it, I've decided to turn it into planks because I think it'll look cool. I don't know that it's worth it. It's gonna it's gonna take all day today and probably all day tomorrow and all day the next day. I'm not doing the whole stage. I'm making a a, a, a perspective kind of situation happen to really, frankly, just to not have to paint the whole stage. Um, but I think it'll be really cool and I would like to get that done and I would like to get everything done so that when they come back from spring break, I gave them the rest of spring break, it is uh, kind of finished and, and like awe-inspiring. Uh, that probably won't happen, but um, I, I think I should say here that it is important, it's always important to have kids build their own stuff when you're doing theater, I think. But we're in a situation where A, it's not always possible, B, it will frankly happen faster if I just do it myself and we're in a time crunch at this point, and C, this is a really great group of kids and I keep saying that and they're no greater than any other group of kids, but every group of kids deserves you to bring their best and uh, this year uh, I think because nothing else is happening in the auditorium until graduation, um, I think why not just destroy it, destroy it, right? Paint the stage, make the set happen because we don't have to like take it on and off when uh, when events happen in the theater this year. So, uh, so that's what I'm here to do. I'm gonna start painting the stage and start dressing the set. And uh, I'm about to go put on the Broadway cast of American Idiot, which is the best way to listen to American Idiot, the, the soundtrack, the, the music. And uh, then I'll just go through the playlist and I'll be here for a while painting. So that's it. Um, yeah, then they come back from spring break next week and time flies.
Chandler, watch turning your back to the camera when you're not supposed to turn your back. Yeah. And hands in pockets. <laughs>